Thank you very much for that. Okay, so Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, the first question is uh, regarding uh, the following. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't require any means, physical eyes and ears to see us and hear. So how can we, uh, how we can see and hear Allah without any means? So Allah doesn't require any means, physical eyes and ears to see us and hear us. So how can we see and hear Allah without any means? Doesn't that make us kind of like Allah or something? Yeah, we, we, we need means, but our means are not necessarily physical means. So we have uh, eyes of the head. We have eyes of heart. As the Quran says, there are ayun which are in sudur, in chest. So Certainly, we need some means. It can be our five senses. It can be through our mind. and can be through intuition, which is not through necessarily mind. It's through heart. So there are different ways that we connect, but our means are very limited. It's not like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has unlimited knowledge, unlimited capacity. We have limited capacity, but the good thing about human being is that this uh, limited capacity can be expanded. The more you go forward, the more you would be able to receive. Inshallah, we will talk about this, that even Rasulullah, with all the knowledge that he was given, Allah says, قُلْ رَبِّزِدْنِي عِلْمًا it means that even for him, there is a chance of increase. Thank you very much. The next question is, how has Allah acquired knowledge? Does he learn from his experiences? Does his knowledge increase by seeing and hearing? Allah's knowledge is one of the two. Knowledge in his essence, al mizati which is always there, it is eternal. Even before creation, he has this knowledge of himself and his creatures, even before their creation. For him, there is no past, present, future that would, you know, affect his essence. And then this knowledge, according to Tawhid al-Safati, is the same as his power, is the same as his life, is the same as his will, will in the sense of Safatazati. And all of them are existentially identical with each other and with his essence. The difference is only in the concepts. But Allah has also knowledge as a sifat fail as a quality of action. This knowledge is abstracted by our mind when our mind reflects on Allah and what is known. If what is known didn't exist yesterday, then the knowledge about him as a sefat fail did not exist yesterday. If, for example, Allah gives me a child today, okay, he knows that I've been given the child as a sefat fail. Or if I do something, can say Allah knew this. Allah came to know this. Alima. For example, Quran says, "Alima annakum kuntum tahtanun anfusakum, alima an sayyakunu minkum marla." This is a fatifah. When something happens, he knows. Okay, before that, this didn't exist, so it was not known that it exists at that time. But these are changes that 
are in our abstraction. They don't reflect changes in Allah. The same is, for example, Allah gave me this rizq today. Allah forgive, for example, someone today. These are all changes that would not affect Allah himself. These are abstracted from a relation between Allah and something. And when one side of relation changes, the relation changes. It doesn't need to have all parties changed. Like, for example, if I uh, put my hand above, for example, the desk, there is a relation now between my hand and the desk. My hand is above the desk. But now, if I remove the desk, even if I, my hand is not moving, if I remove the desk, I can say the desk was under my hand and now it is not under my hand. Although the hand has not changed. This is something that in Aqaid, inshallah, uh, can be discussed more. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the next question was about something said today with regards to uh, the purpose of our creation. It was said that the purpose of creation is to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to receive his mercy. Allah is all powerful, doesn't need anything. So why is serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the purpose of our creation? Even receiving mercy will be our benefit. So why is that too the purpose of our creation? If the above is the question of an atheist, how do we answer? Uh, as I said, there is a hierarchy of reasons. If someone asks you why God created us, you can give an answer which has all these insight, or you can give a general answer. The general answer is very easy. Even if someone doesn't know these verses of the Quran, you know, the general answer is this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all the knowledge required for creation and all the power required for creation. And He is merciful, He is benevolent. He is absolutely gracious. Absolutely gracious, absolutely generous. If you consider these three factors, someone has absolute knowledge, absolute power, and he's absolutely gracious and generous. Would you need anything else to explain why he creates? Or indeed, it's the opposite. If he doesn't create, we wonder why. Did you lack knowledge? Did you, did you, you know, not know how to create? Did you not have power and means? Did you had limitations in your graciousness? No. So why didn't he, he didn't create? If a teacher who loves teaching, loves knowledge, suffers when people are ignorant and has the knowledge, has the means is healthy, he has time. If such person teaches, would you be surprised? Or if he doesn't teach, you would be surprised. If a doctor who loves treating people, he loves his job, he is very much in pain when people are ill. He wants to help ill people. 
and he has the means, he has the time, he has health. There are opportunities or he can create opportunities. He can create a hospital, clinic, bring nurses, you know, in medicine, etc., to treat people. If you know that he is a person who loves treating people and he has the means and knowledge, etc., would you be surprised why he is seeing the patients and helping them? No. If he doesn't do that, you would be surprised. If sugar tastes sweet, would you be surprised? So creation for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a requirement of his essence, is a requirement of an essence which has absolute knowledge, absolute power, and absolute benevolence. If he had not created, we would have been very much, you know, puzzled and we could not <laughs> explain. Even if, for example, he could create one million things and he had created one million minus one, we should have been surprised why you didn't create that one. You could have created that one as well. Like an artist who loves painting, for example. He has all the means all the time, everything. He could make 10 masterpieces and he made only nine. So why you didn't make the 10th? So this is a very good answer. And under this, if you want, then you can explain the role of Liya'budun. Because for our perfection, we need to serve him. If you want to learn calligraphy, you have to listen to your master. If you want to learn any, I don't know, art, any sport, you have to listen to your coach. This is the meaning of Le'abudun. We listen to Allah so that we can improve. But this is part of the reasons and hierarchy of reasons for creation. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, um, thank you very much. We have still some questions as well. So here the question that is, um, there's two questions. Some of them, uh, the, there was a question that just said treating children differently. If somebody can resubmit that question and maybe it was uh, cut off or something, I, I, I couldn't know what to ask there. Uh, I, I can ask, um, I can guess what's the question. Maybe the question yeah, is okay. uh, that we said, you know, when we have children, we ha have attention to each of them. And maybe the question is, what about treating them differently? Okay. Uh, the answer is you have all your attention for every child, of course, with limitations of human being, but you have all your attention. And therefore, if a child is more in need, you may utilize you may cash your attention more for the child who is in need He's just born or for example if a child has illness if a child has disability if a child has problem in life maybe you actually spend more time with that child but this doesn't mean that your love for your other children is reduced so you love each of them on their own you love each of them in a unique way but what you can do for them, of course, is limited. In the case of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his love, his attention, his care is not limited at all. So as parents, you have a glance of that with all the limitations that we human beings have. 
Now, when you treat your children, of course, you need to observe their needs, their situations, etc. But another thing that you need to observe is the way other children are going to look at it. So we have to observe two things. What this child needs, what other children are going to think. Maybe they are not that yet mature enough to understand why I'm spending more time, for example, or, or spending more money on this child. Maybe they think I am discriminating. So I have to be very careful. If I am praising, if I'm encouraging, or you know, practically doing something for one child, not for the others, because there is a need for that, I should do it in the way that doesn't lead to misunderstanding, doesn't lead to the other children thinking that they are you know, secondary to me, they are not important for me. So this is one of the challenges of the parents that their children may need different treatments and they need to do it in the way that it's fair and it is understood by other people or kept hidden or understood. So you have to find a wise way of offering treatment to each child as they need, as they deserve, without making other children feel they are marginalized or they are not important to you anymore, etc. Uh, it got muted, Sheikhna. It got muted. Yes. And this is very difficult, especially when you have a two years old child, three years old child, and then you are given a new child. It's very difficult because this child used to be very much loved and preoccupying your time. And now all of a sudden he has a new brother or sister and you have to pay lots of attention to this newborn baby that child for him, this can be a miserable situation because he thinks that he's no longer wanted, he's no longer loved. And sometimes also parents are not careful as soon as he does something, you know, they question him as if he's very much understanding, very mature. He's just a few years old, but they compare it to the newborn and they think, oh, he must be understanding everything. So we have to be very careful as parents about these delicate issues. Indeed. Next, we have a question about how the guidance, how guidance is possible, how is guidance possible before creation? Uh, as we know, the Quran says that we taught and then created in Surah Al Rahman. So, then what kind of guidance or ta'lim was done before creation? Actually, this is the first thing I'm going to discuss, inshallah, about Surah Rahman. So in the second part, inshallah, after questions, I talk about this. So in that case, uh, we probably want to give it some time then, shouldn't we? To, yeah, to so go to the second part. There's, there's, we take some more questions, sure. So we have uh, here. Maybe we can leave them for the end, actually. Yeah. Because yeah. I want to finish. Uh, one part so sounds good inshallah we'll stop here then, inshallah, at the end i hope there will yeah. be even if we time. don't uh, take them to this week if they get left over alhamdulillah they're in the sheet record all the questions yes there is no law if there is any possibility we try to answer inshallah all the questions okay bismillah rahman rahim la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah al-ali al-azim الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين جل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم 
اللهم افتح علينا ابواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين ان شاء الله if you remind me so that i would translate also this dua in the next question and answer time and explain this beautiful dua for a study so that inshallah everyone can also use it in the quran we said knowledge of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very much emphasized on building upon that discussion now we want to say also the fact that allah is a teacher someone who teaches is also very much emphasized in the quran for example in surah ar-rahman chapter 55 in the beginning of the surah we have a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الرحمن as you know الرحمن is sometimes used as a proper noun as اسم خاص for Allah سبحانه وتعالى you can call him Allah, you can call him Ar-Rahman. قُلِ ادْعُ اللَّهِ أَبْدْعُ الرَّحْمَانِ أَيَّمَّا تَدْعُوا فَلَهُ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْخُسْنِ There was you know, a kind of question, shall we call him Allah, shall we call him Ar-Rahman? Allah says you can call him Allah, you can call him Ar-Rahman, which is very important. It shows how Rahmah is great part of our understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Rahman can be also a sefa means someone who has inclusive rahmah. What is important is that when Allah refers to ta'aleem of Quran and creation of man, he says Ar-Rahman allam al-Quran. So there must be a connection with Rahmah. From this we understand that the teachers of Quran and the teachers of religion in general are continuing the job of Ar-Rahman. And therefore they should be equipped with the qualities of Ar-Rahman which bear on this task. And in particular they should be equipped with knowledge and Rahmah. Fathers, mothers, teachers, religious scholars, they should manifest Rahmaniya of Allah and knowledge in their teaching. Of course, there are also other qualities like wisdom, but right now the focus here is on Ar Rahman. Allama al Quran taught the Qur'an. خلق الإنسان created man. علمه البيان taught man how to express himself. If we were going to just consider chronological order, it should be Ar-Rahman khalaq al-insan. Allama al-Quran. Allamahu al-bayan. Or maybe even bayan should be brought before because ability to express ourselves is before being taught Quran. خلق الإنسان علمه البيان وعلمه القرآن. If we were going to follow chronological order, because man should exist so that can be taught the Quran. But تعليم is so important 
that Allah starts with ta'lim and ends with ta'lim and puts in between creation. So first of all, he says, Allama al-Qur'an. Ar-Rahman Allama al-Qur'an. And this is actually more important than our creation because if guidance through teaching was not there, there was no point in creating human beings. Human beings with so much of potentials, if they were not going to receive guidance and those potentials were wasted, there was no need to create them. He created them and a requirement of creating such beings with such capacity is guidance. So, Allam al Quran, Khalaq al Insan, Allamahu al Bayan. This shows that we should also focus on Ta'lim al Quran and on being manifestations of Rahman in Ta'lim Quran, we should pay attention to the physical well-being of our trainees, Khalaq al-Insan. But also we should be concerned about their ability of communication. You have to help your children or your students with their knowledge of Quran, with their physical well-being, and with their ability of communicate. If they are spiritually enlightened with the Quran and physically healthy, and they are given ability to communicate, then they can by themselves become good teachers to educate others and then light goes on and spreads so allah is muallim muallim of quran muallim of bayan but this doesn't mean that in time he created Quran first and then created Insan. It's a matter of significance, it's importance. Also, if we can have on a screen, uh, in Surat Alaq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Iqra' rabbuka al-akram. It is very interesting that although the society of Arab Peninsula suffered from great amount of jahiliya, part of that jahiliya, not all, part of it was illiteracy. But there were also lots of moral elements. It's not just they didn't know, that it was more than that. But part of it was that they didn't know. Especially written literature was very, very rare. And Quran starts with emphasis on written literature. The first verses revealed to the Prophet وسلم, was Iqra. Bism Rabbika Ladi Khalaq. And Iqra needs to have a text. So this is the significance of writing. But Interestingly, Allah 
emphasizes even more and he says اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم read in the name of your Lord who created created man from cloth اقرأ وربك الأكرم Again, read. And your most honorable or most gracious, most generous Lord taught how to use the pen. According to a common interpretation, Allama bil qalam means he taught how to use pen. Even we have Surah Al-Qalam. You know, if Quran was revealed in a world full of universities and schools and houses and scholars and students and academics, then you would say, oh, it should start with Iqra, or, you know, emphasis on pen, on bayan communication. But this is more just a, that in that society, Quran, especially in its very first incident of revelation, so much refers to reading and pen and you know uh, teaching and knowledge, etc. So we have Qalam here, we have Surah Al Qalam, Noon, Wal Qalam wa Ma Yasturun. Very beautiful. Allah taught man what he didn't know. Knowledge should be given about the things that people don't know. So we should have new materials, new ideas for them. A teacher always need needs to refresh himself or herself with new knowledge in islam a teacher should be also a learner the only teacher who is not learning is allah himself otherwise even rasulullah should ask for more knowledge even if you have you know, best of degrees and, you know, you have studied with great teachers. Till end of your life, you must always refresh your knowledge. Otherwise, what you know can be forgotten. What you know can lose its details. What you know can little by little get confused. And new things that would give energy, would you know, give life to your heart, would be kept away from you. And next generation would be deprived. So a good teacher should learn new things to pass on also new things. Not that, you know, we just keep repeating and people also get bored, you know, say so we never learn anything new. So people who come to your lectures, to your you know sessions, should go with more understanding. They should benefit, at least understand things that they knew in a deeper way. It's very important. Of course, some people you know should not think that we have to introduce innovative ideas in the sense that we say something new that no one has said no scholar has said just for the sake of saying new things no when you bring a fresh fruit it doesn't mean that you know to make it artificially it should be from the same tree with the same roots with the same DNA, 
but just fresh. A good scholar brings fresh fruits from the same tree. This is very important. Not that, you know, he buys, you know, fruit or, you know, engineers fruits which are artificial or buys fruits you know, from market that we don't know where they come from and presents to us as fruits of the same tree that we wanted. So the issue of ta'lim is very important. And now there is a subtle point that I want to draw your attention. Why Allah is Akram? Warabukal Akram. Why is Akram? Of course, you may say it's obvious Mulana is Akram because all honor and dignity comes from him and he is Akram. I say yes, but why here it's mentioned? that he is Akram. It seems that the reason is to emphasize on Ta'lim because وَرَبُّكَ akram الَّذِي عَلَّمَ بِالْقَلَمِ عَلَّمَ His Akramiyya here connects with his Ta'lim. This shows that teachers should be honored. Allah here is introduced as the most honorable because he has taught. He has taught how to use pen. He has taught what man didn't know. If we had everything but not this teaching of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about how to use pen and about things that we didn't know. We are still were living in caves. We have come so much forward in science, technology, in religion, theology, spirituality, all these sciences. Because Allah has taught us how to use pen. Allah has taught us what we didn't know. So because of this, it's mentioned that he is Al-Akram. So this shows that teaching adds to your karam. And those who have greatest knowledge and greatest involvement and engagement with teaching, like prophets, like imams, like scholars, like good teachers, they are most honorable members of the community okay now we move on to other discussions about knowledge and that is the fact that allah taught adam as a teacher so not only Quran talks about Allah teaching all mankind, but he also mentions some examples, some cases that he taught some particular human beings. For example, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا In order to demonstrate to the angels the capacity of Adam to be his vice friend, is Khalifa on the earth. He taught Adam salam, all the names, his names of all the facts. And then asked the angels, inform me about the names of these things. So Adam was taught all the names of the facts, then Allah refer to those facts and said angels inform about these things and they said may you be glorified subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana we don't have any knowledge except what you have taught us and this is not included in what you have taught us 
And this is because they didn't have capacity to be taught in the first place. So with this difference in capacity, they realize that they cannot be Khalifatullah on the earth. Although they don't do any bad thing, they don't commit any crime, they just do tasbih and hamd, but because they don't have that great capacity for knowledge, they cannot occupy this great position of Khalifatullah. Because Allah, as we said in the first session, has knowledge in its absolute sense. So his Khalifa, if he doesn't have absolute knowledge, at least should have unlimited capacity for knowledge so that Allah would teach him whatever is needed, whatever is required. This is why knowledge is a great quality and a great condition, a great qualification for the prophets, for imams, for a marja, for anyone who wants to be an Islamic leader. Knowledge is very important quality. And we cannot compromise about knowledge. Okay. This is about when it comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam as another particular case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in chapter 4, Surah Nisa, verse 113, Allah taught you what you didn't know. But he doesn't just say what you didn't know. Those who know Arabic understand the difference between Allamaka ma lam ta'alam and Allamaka ma lam takun ta'alam. These are different. Allamaka ma lam ta'alam means he taught you what you didn't know. But ma lam takun ta'alam means what you could not know. You didn't have ability and means to know. Allah is the sole provider of this type of knowledge. And Allah's grace upon you has been great. His grace has been great. Means he has taught you a lot. But as we said, still Allah asked the Prophet to ask for more knowledge. One of the beautiful concepts in the Quran about knowledge and about teaching is that in addition to conventional methods of learning and teaching, there are ways which are not conventional. There are people that Allah gives them knowledge directly. We taught him from ourselves. Prophet Khidr had knowledge that we call Elm Ladunni because Allah says, Min ladunna, from ourselves. Misdirect. Of course, everything comes from Allah. Even when we go to a school, it comes from Allah. But in a direct way. It's not on, you know, through schooling. Or in a general way, Allah says in Surah Baqarah, verse 282, be pious, be wary of God, and God will teach you. This shows that knowledge 
can come with taqwa, with God fearing. This is not knowledge that you learn from a school. This is special knowledge. This knowledge is very practical in nature. This knowledge is something that would have practical impact. And one important aspect of it is that helps you to distinguish between right and wrong. Therefore, Quran says that Allah gives furqan and tattaqullah yaj'al lakum furqan. And here says, ittaqullah wa yu'allamukumullah. So Allah gives us a kind of knowledge that helps us to distinguish between truth and falsehood and between right and wrong. So in the realm of theoretical wisdom to understand what is true, what is false, and in the realm of practical wisdom to understand what is right and what is wrong. This comes with taqwa. Of course, we have to go to school, we have to read books, we have to take notes, all are needed. But these with practice, with taqwa, with commitment, would qualify to be registered in another school, in a spiritual school where Allah is the teacher and he would directly teach you. He would directly inspire you and educate you as he did with his other friends in the past. And in a general way, he says, as Imam Sadiq said in Hadith of Ulwan al Basri, Laisa al Ilm, inshallah, we talk about it. The Kathrat al Ta'alim wa Ta'alum, Balil Ilm, Nurun, Yakadifuhullah, Fi Kalbe Man Yasha. Knowledge is not a matter of learning and teaching. This is not just a matter of learning. It's a light, knowledge a light that Allah projects into the heart of the people that he chooses, he wants. People that Allah finds them suitable, qualified to receive this knowledge, this light. So, اتقوا ويعلمكم الله then, inshallah, we have to talk about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being a teacher. I think this is enough for our sessions today. So we talked about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his knowledge and his teaching. Inshallah, in the next session, we'll talk about Rasulullah being a teacher. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to be always engaged in learning and teaching and practice until end of our life and be one of those people that in our hadith are introduced as people who would be called in kingdom of Allah with respect. Inshallah, we have this beautiful hadith that we will discuss whoever learns and teaches and acts for the sake of Allah in the kingdoms of Allah and the skies he would be called or she would be called with great respect inshallah Allah would include us amongst those people and keeps inshallah this honor for us to the end of our life inshallah alhamdulillah اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجا. Do we have time for one more question? One more question. Yes, we have five minutes. Inshallah. Yes. So this was something in the form as well. Uh, I will read it. Uh, the question is: If we attain knowledge of Allah, 
uh, then can that be uh, that this one can say that this may not be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is independent of our thoughts, our mind, our comprehension and perception. So how do we look at this, uh, this point? Can we really attain knowledge of Allah when Allah is independent of our thoughts, our mind, our comprehension and perception? We cannot know him perfectly. Even Rasulullah says, Ma araf ma'rafatik. We have not known you as you must be known, or it is you know your proper way of knowing, being known, which he knows himself in that way. We can know him in our capacity. This doesn't mean that we don't know him at all. No, we can know him. We can know him to a great deal, but never perfect. Never we reach end of it. We can always know more and more and more, better and better and better, deeper and deeper and deeper. But in the end, Rasulullah says, "Ma arafna ke hakka ma arafatik, wa ma abadna ke hakka ibadatik." Ibad and ma'arif, as I said, li abudun li arifun. These are very closely connected. We have not served you, worshipped you as it's your right. And it is proper, it's perfect, and we have not known. So your answer is that, yes, we can never know him perfectly, but still we can know him to a great extent. And the Quran many times asks us to develop this understanding. For example, as I said, Allah says, لِتَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلُّ شَيْنْ قَدِيرٌ so we can know, but not perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Shihan Karim. Uh, there are some questions that are coming through uh, on the chat. Uh, please kindly submit them to uh, this uh, simple form. It's very easy. You just have to paste your question into this form, and then we would be uh, taking care of them and making sure that they're uh, very well taken care of and not forgotten and tracked with the attention to priority. So yeah, I, I just noticed maybe a follow-up for previous questions. Someone has put yes. uh, the tradition of Imam Bagr Yes, That tradition is about the fact that, as I said, our knowledge of Allah is never perfect. Imam Bagr al-Salam said, Kullama mayyastumuhu bi'awhamkum fi adaq ma'ani fahuwa makhluqun mislukum mardudun ilaykum. Whatever you come up as an image of God, even with adaq ma'ani, you try to be very, very careful Still, it is your creation. Still, it is something that is a result of your limited mind. It's not God. Therefore, it's very important that whenever we think of God and we describe God, we should know that he is greater. And this is why the Quran says, Subhanallah amma yasifun. Whatever they describe is to be coming with glorification and tanzih of Allah. Illa ibadallah al-mukhlasin. Those who are mukhlas, who are purified by Allah, it's more than mukhlas. These are the people that their description of God doesn't need tanzih. Other people, their description of God needs tanzi, and they should always know that Allah is greater. Actually, in our hadith, Allahu Akbar means Allahu Akbar min an Yusuf. He is greater than being described. Not he is greater than everything. He is greater than even description. Every description falls short. 
when they want to describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we can talk about his knowledge, but we say his knowledge is much greater than this. We talk about his life, but then we say greater than anything we think about life. Always have this attention. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Thank you very much, Sheikh Na. And uh, we, uh, we really want to uh, extend our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to yourself for this My pleasure. Uh, extremely invaluable set of knowledge. And the day is not finished for uh, our dear students. They have to get ready, inshallah, for their next sessions with their uh, this, the, the, the dedicated instructors and, and scholars. Uh, for those who are able to, so as soon as you exit the link here, you would uh, go to your email, please check your spam and junk email and check that you have the link. If you have some difficulty with that, inshallah, this meeting.